As you can see, we're in Ratcliffe near Canal, Manchester Bottle and Bay Canal, and it's a lovely sunny day, and I'm really enjoying it. I'll show you a few at sites if you follow me. As you can see, John, farther down, that's where the road blocked the canal many moons ago. Uh, the canal used to run that road there by a bridge, but then when the canal fell into dereliction, they dropped the bridge. So all it is now is a bit of a pipe that lets water come from like the Elton side to the Ratcliffe side. And we were going to go down and look at Paper Mill, uh, what used to be at Creams, uh, when the canal burst in July 1936. Uh, that whole section became dry along with Vestalee Locks. So what happened, uh, I believe in like the sort of like early 50s, uh, the paper company was expanding at that time, uh, decided that they were going to build on the canal. So they actually built a brick warehouse literally over the canal. Uh, yeah, what we're doing today, uh, we're having a look at the old Manchester Bolton and Bray Canal. Um, I became interested in this in 1984 when I did a walk with the Crawler Old Valley Warden Service. Uh, 12 months later in 1985, uh, my mum and dad bought a house in Little Lever, so I started exploring this old derelict canal. I felt really sorry for it because bits were dry, bits were filled in, it was completely derelict. So I tried to join a canal society, but there were none, so I ended up starting one. Uh, so in July 1987, 20 years ago this month, um, I founded the Manchester Bolton and Bury Canal Society, which is still going today. We've come to a place called Knob End, which it's not a, well, it's not, it's a not a nice place, but I don't like the name. <laughs> and we're going to have a look at a few features. Behind us is the old Knob End, which was an old canal pub. Um, it's now a private residence and it's up for sale. And if documentary is successful, I won't mind buying it and turning it into a tea room. And um, what we're going to do now, we're going to walk down to Canal Bridge, uh, which is the old junction of all the arms. The Salford Arm, uh, the Bury Arm and the Manchester Arm. Let's <laughs> have a look. We're now at Knob Bridge. As you can see, we're actually stood on a canal bridge, but you'd never know it. Uh, the section of canal in front of us has been dry since July 1936, when the canal dramatically burst along this section. In the distance, the blue building, that's where Cream's Paper Mill is. And like originally, the canal, if, if we're coming from at the back of us, that way is Bolton, straight on was towards Bury. And if, you can't see it because of all the vegetation, but originally on the right hand side, was the top of the Prestelee locks, which were six locks what took you down to the lower level to Salford. We'll have a look at them in a short while. First, we'll have a quick look at the Canal Company Depot and the Bolton Arm. Uh, if you look behind me there, uh, that's where the canal used to go on, uh, to the junction with the Berry Branch and the arm what went down the locks to Manchester. As you can see now, it's dry and you've got trees growing in it. If you look to it right, uh, this is the old way to Bolton, which I believe were two and three quarter miles away to Church Wharf. Uh, this nice old building here, which is now dilapidated, used to be the main workshops of the canal company. Uh, they were in use until the sort of like 1940s. And in there they used to build boats, they used to build lock gates. You had a blacksmith and it was a hive of activity. Uh, if you had the money I'd love to turn that into like a canal side visitor centre tea room. And I'd be in my element, I'd spend all my time in there. As you can see now we're still on a Bolton length and if you look over there, you might just be able to see what looks like a bit of metal sticking out the water. That is actually sort of one end of a canal boat. Um, originally that was used as like a maintenance boat on this section uh, where the workers would like use it uh, being pulled by a horse and they would maintain this, you know, like look after water and towpath etc. Again, if you had the money I'd probably like bring that to the surface like Titanic and get it renovated and I float around the canal system. Um, here again, the old Canal Company depot. If you look at gutters up there, they've not been cleaned for a while, and they almost look like a forest. Do you think this building dates back to the 1790s? It's an absolute crying shame for it being in this condition. Um, at one point, the Canal Society leased it, but due to vandalism, they had to give it back to British Waterways. Um, let's hope this documentary is a success, and I can do things like this, what I want to do. Uh, building on top of Hill, John, that's called Wellfield House. And originally that was sort of a canal stopover. Uh, just at the back of there you had stables and the boatmen used to stop in there and they could like put the horses in there for night, have a bit of a kip. Uh, the house itself was owned by a, a well-known boating family called the Lansdale family. Um, many moons ago I managed to meet uh, the sister of George Lansdale and the brother 
and I've still got an audio tape somewhere. Uh, we're on the top lock, lock 17 of the Manchester Butler Bay Canal. If you look down to the floor, you can just make out that's where the, the lock gate used to be. And then ridges is where you like you put your feet in, you know, to um, so, so you can like move the balance beam back. Uh, if you look to the left, you can actually see it's totally overgrown, but this is where the locks were. And you had six locks here, broad locks. Uh, you had two staircases of three separated by a short pound. Um, but like you can tell, it, it's just so overgrown, you'd never know it existed now. But underneath there is all the stonework. Well, I'm now standing on the bury section just above Knob End Locks. I walk here, here to my left, all this vegetation and forest. Um, originally this was a big massive canal turning basin where boats leaving the top lock could do an 180 degree turn, uh, go back on themselves past the canal company depot to Bolton or so you could go straight on to Bury and Ratcliffe. Uh, what we stood on are big massive granite coping stones. Uh, like The thing about this canal, it was so well constructed. Uh, the full 15 miles of a furlong were built like this. Lovely stone dress walls. Uh, you can see, uh, at this point it would have been quite deep, the canal. Must be a good six or seven foot there. And again, that'll probably be partly due to subsidence uh, since the canal shot. Again, this section has been dry since July 1936 because of the canal breach farther up. Amazingly now, if the canal was still working, it were full of water, we'd be drowning. But as it so happened, we're now actually stood in the canal bed. Um, just in front of me, you can see the lovely dressed stone canal banks and the coping edges. And that was the original towpath. And that forest is now like that because the canal burst in July 1936. Right, we're now stood actually in the canal bed again. And if you look to my left, you can actually see the beautiful stone masonry of the canal. This was the coping stone where people would walk along, but it's the non towpath side. And if you look at this exquisite stonework, these were the wash walls. Uh, the original level of the water would probably go about up to there. So to put it in perspective, because canals were usually like four and a half foot deep. Um, planning around, if you look across there, you can actually see this is the site of the tragic uh, canal breach. And this occurred in July 1936, when a lot of the banking collapsed. And I don't know if you can make it out, but you can see some old railway girders, which are sticking out what looks like a rock formation. They were put in by the old owners of the canal, which were the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Company in the 1880s. Uh, to try and strengthen the bank because along it was really weak and the problem with the canal in the in the sort of the valley bottom is the river uh, they sort of built it um, the canal following the river but because it followed the river you had to build these massive like retaining walls to support the canal uh, the problem is like during winters and stuff uh, when the canal froze over it put a lot of pressure on the bank and again uh, sort of like to look well you know, because of lack of maintenance, they didn't look after it. Uh, this ultimately slipped. Uh, and this is the actual thing what shut the canal down. I don't believe anyone got hurt. Uh, certainly all the earth went down into the valley floor. And it dammed the river. So the river water then banked back up. And it flooded the paper mill, which is farther back upstream. Um, ironically, just before it collapsed, there was a cyclist cycling along the towpath. And they reckon as he was cycling, the canal towpath was collapsing in behind him. If you can imagine that, he must have been like white as a ghost. Uh, what it did do, there's a classic photograph where you've got, the, the boats on this canal used to be called box boats, 68 foot long and they used to carry coal containers. And there's a wonderful atmospheric photograph which shows a boat hanging over this edge all the way down to the river in the, in the valley bottom. You know, it's just such a tragic place.